Sorry for the standby, you guy, everyone. Uh, but speaking of, you mentioned, We're back. You mentioned Canarin. Yeah, yeah. We're back. And we have another question from uh, Bickus or Bikis or Bikies. I don't know what his name is pronounced. But anyway, um, he complains about me, us putting on the spot, which is true, we did. Um, but here's he has a couple of good questions, so just give me brief answers on those okay. so we can move on. Um, first question is, if Gilliston the Archer was taught by Canarin, uh -huh. did he ever learn wind calling? Could wind calling shoot, uh, wind caller shoot better than he could? I don't think anybody can shoot better than Canarin. And well, by to Gilliston the Archer. Well, and by extension, right. Gilliston the he's the she, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the elf. Uh, he's probably the second or third best archer that there ever was, and you know that's. That's the Elder Days. That's legend time. So he's practically a demigod. The archers that are running around in the world now aren't nearly as good as he was. You've always got to think of this, again, in terms of of, uh, of Tolkien and in terms of the Lord of the Rings, you know. Oh, there was back Silmarillion days when stuff was really cool. And you had elf lords that could take on a swarm of Balrogs all at once and walk away. Nowadays, we've got cool people, but they're not, well, they're not that kind of cool. So there you go. All right, now this is the next question is, what war did Gamrist Olastor fight in, and is he dead? Gamrist Olastor. Gamrist Olastor is, I'm betting, that elf that's quoted about in the Commander Discipline. I'm thinking. The question, oh boy, you know? All right, you got me. It can happen. <laughs> Unless something that I wrote somewhere contradicts what I'm about to say, I would be willing to bet that Gamrus Olastor fought in the War of the Scourge against Chaos. He may have also fought in the big war against the Centaurs that led up to the Taming, and in the War of the Stones uh, against the Dwarves. Um, but I'm betting War of the Scourge, and I'm also betting that he's not alive. Because a lot of great heroes and, and people and whatnot didn't walk away from that one. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. All right, Gamma stole the store in the Steel Wind and defeating forces ten times his number. Uh, he's War of Ashes. He's the War of Ashes against the Orcs and whatnot when, when uh, Morlock came back from uh, Beyond Chaos. I'm betting that he got his feet wet in the War of the Scourge 700 years earlier. So there, that's the definitive answer to your question. Um, oh, and is he dead? Oh, is he dead? Maybe. <laughs> okay, the next question is, whatever happened to Corin Andor? Um, and don't tell me he fell off the edge of his own. Corin Andor the Mariner. I... He sailed away. Hang on a sec. All right, I may be wrong, because I wrote all of this a long time ago, and it's been a while since I've been in the thick of it. But as I recall, Corin Andor the Mariner sailed off of the world in his big white ship, which is a constellation in the sky now, uh, to try to put the sun out. Uh, at some point in the later age of twilight, the age of dawn, after there was a sun but before time began. And he didn't ever come back. And I'm thinking that uh, Liliandra the Fair the she who's the goddess of love and beauty, who was his, uh, his wife, she, uh, she ended up crying a lake over it, a lake of her tears, which is one of the sacred places of the elves, which has since long since fallen off the map or been despoiled. But he sailed off and he never came back. And um, everyone is presuming that he's dead. So, and these are my little homage to Arendil, if anyone is curious. Here's another question by Warch, and it's pretty interesting, actually. Okay. He asked, would it be possible, eventually, to have players receive visions? Um, depends on what you mean by visions. I can see players receiving particularly long and descriptive tells, maybe. But in terms of, are we going to black your screen out and play a movie for you and stuff? Well, I know the code doesn't support that now. And the well, we code... do have the Shadowbane Recorder feature. Well, that's true. We do have the Shadowbane Recorder feature. So, you probably wouldn't get them in-game. <laughs> but you might, you might receive a vision that you could then look at 
and uh, respond to how you will. Interesting. That would be yeah. cool. You could play that up with different uh, visions by race or oh, yeah. ideology. And uh, once, once uh, the build that we're about to uh, to give to the beta guys, the recorder should be up and going. And once once we stomp on it a little bit, make sure that it works. Eventually, we're going to get demos out to you guys, and it's it's really cool. I got to play with it once when I was doing the documentation, so all it's, right. it's all good. Next question is, and I know a lot of people will be happy that you mentioned as much as you can on this. Oh boy, the Amazons. Oh, here we time go. to give them some love. Okay. So um, this is from Puka, and Puka writes: Have there been any influential Amazons who have altered the flow of history uh, for the rest of the world? Not simply the Amazon nation. For the rest of the world. Well, there's obviously Phaedra. Um, but all that she really did was lead the Amazons away. Once they were away, they pretty much stayed away. However, the very fact that there were legends about them and that the rest of the world knew something of them, they knew that they had a hidden valley and it was guarded by these powerful, strange people, uh, implies that there was some contact or other. I haven't really given much thought to that arena. I've been much more concerned with the origins of the Amazons at the deep, deep level. Um, however, it wouldn't surprise me at all if there was some kind of big quest thing that led at least one major Amazon heroine out of the valley of, of Delgana and out into the world on some kind of epic, I imagine almost a Barragund style quest, not necessarily for Shadowbane, but for something really important. So I would expect that there was probably one or two. Since the turning, uh, I would expect there are a few that are out there and who will be still walking around as future characters. Huga also writes that mm -hmm. uh, we may find Delgana um, without interference or help by others. Uh, can you give some kind of hint of what role Delgana might play in the next five years? Wow. If you find Delgana, it's always going to be in terms, think of it, I'm always going to use it as a plot device in terms of, you know, if you guys finally found it so that you could go back and live in a world free of men, that wouldn't be particularly interesting for you guys or for the rest of the world at large. So if Delgana shows up, it's much more interesting to me as a, as a narrator and for you guys as players to have Delgana be a place that wasn't the way you left it. So that if you if you actually do get to go back home, you'll have to save it or to change it back to the way it used to be. Uh, also, if you find it, what it's going to be mostly a source of is going to it's going to be a source of some serious lore. There are going to be some serious feature characters there who didn't leave. I would expect there is an empress of the empire and there are also a lot of furies who've been around a long time who might be able to have give lots of advice on uh, on other things. So that would be how I would primarily use it. I would bring it I would have you find your way back to it but have it be seriously threatened and have there have there be a huge conflict to save it. Glasswalker asked, uh, we hear about the deathless left over from the edge of uh, from the age of twilight. Oh yeah yeah yeah. How are they different from the rest of us now? The way that Galadriel is different from Legolas, if I may not step on anyone's copyrights. Um, they are immensely old. They are experienced and worn with care to the point where it's difficult to carry on a conversation with them. They've lost so much and seen so much come and go that, you know, almost as a defense mechanism, they've built up a wall between them and anything. They have immense memories to the point where it would actually, you know, they, they remember everything, but it's going to take them some time to dig it up. Uh, and they're immensely powerful, you know, because A, everyone was more powerful back then. That's the first law of epic fantasy. And B, uh, from a purely practical standpoint, they've had ages to level. So, um... They're going to primarily be different in, in outlook and power level. If players want to walk around claiming to be deathless, that's cool. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. It, it would it would be a formidable role from a from a pure RP standpoint. Though you can bet there are going to be a lot of uh, not a lot, but there will be more than one deathless feature character. Also, do we have anything we can uh, tell some of the players about? Uh, 
Another question we have is, uh, what do you think about werewolf lore, were lore? The wares? There's that, uh, there's that beast that burns inside them. Uh, that's the source of, of it, the source of their rage, the animal that's in their hearts. So is that connected to the beast lords? That's a very interesting question. Certainly the beast lords seemed, uh, in the werebear lore, the beast lord of bears taught the first uh, werebear how to change. Uh, I would say that they're definitely connected to them. The big question to ask is, there's pretty much a dichotomy that shows up, and it's not as clear now as it used to be. Uh, when I was first starting, there are some there's some story threads that have diminished and, and, and faded. But one of the clear dichotomies that I wanted set up was there's a big difference between animals and people, and this is basic myth, you know. This is Kipling and everybody. There's there's people which are cool and animals which are lesser not cool. And the beast lords are looking out for the animals. So if people are not animals, how did that beast get inside of these of these were people? For, how did it manifest inside humanity? Is it some kind of infiltration process? Are they trying to wear us down? How did that happen? That's the question you want to ask. Uh, and in terms of the big secret of were lore, that's that's the secret that needs to be divulged. And I'll give you a hint. There's another question that gets asked all the time in terms of. There's a reference to this. What is that? Well, they might be really linked, and that's as, that's as concrete as I'm going to get about that. <laughs> hey, hey, we have uh, another one. Uh, we have another one about patronymic last names, but we'll, we'll save that more for a form setting, which is not okay. very appropriate. Um, the last question of the day is, will... Uh, the last but one. Yeah, the last but one is, will you continue to write our history once the game comes out? And, and likewise, will, will you ever include actual players or, or, or perhaps uh, uh, with the journals of the Heralds or the, so forth? Well, the Heralds journals are going to include players by necessity and by design. That's, that's what they're for. Uh, they'll also, I mean, they'll be talking about the feature characters too, but only in the context of what the feature characters are doing in comparison to the people. Because again, at the end, you know, we don't want, we don't want a soap opera that you're watching on TV. Where you know you're turning in and you're tuning in and reading what the feature characters did this week. No, who cares about that? You want to know what the players did this week. Um, we get into some weird stuff here uh, in terms of of, of ownership and, and and properties and names and whatnot. And you know, if we report about someone who's using a name that's copyrighted somewhere else, is that legal? Is that it's weird? It's name policy, actually. Oh, well, okay, then it's against our name policy. All right. And again, you know, is it going to be embarrassing for us to write, you know, the chronicle of Mastakilla 184 into the, into, the, into the lore? Yeah, it's not my ideal position. So you can bet that, once again, as I talked about before, if you want to jump into this story and you want to role play and you want to get into this lore, we'll make it worth your while. And this is one of the ways that we could do that. If you're willing to work with us, we're going to see if we can't work with you as well. And again, always think of it in terms of the feature characters are going to be powerful people who are going to be looking for agencies to do what they want to do, and that's you guys. So, and we're going to have eyes and ears. We're going to know who the people are who are into it, and we're going to ask them first, and then we'll move to other people. Could you see any scenarios where players rise up? In the player community, they actually, by, uh, by their own talents and merit, actually get themselves entwined into the official lore? Well, yeah, because there's there's going to be stuff that goes down. We're going to have these these big turning points, these crisis points, and uh, with several potential outcomes. And it's going to come down to a guild or a group or several guilds working together that are going to swing which one it is. You know, either this is going to happen or this is not going to happen. And at the end of the day, it's because of those guys. Then that's cool. They're going to get written in, and whether or not. You know, it's it's a paragraph that they read on a website, or whether or not it's an epic poem or whatever. Hey, you know, uh, that's going to be up to the to the writing chops of the heralds. Um, I don't have enough of a magic eight ball right now to know how much of that end of it I'm going to be directly involved in. Although I'll be peripherally involved as much as I'm needed. I'm not yet really sure how much this ongoing content slash feature character stuff is going to demand all of my time. But I hope to have, you know, I figure I'll at least be connected to that Herald program 
and any assistance that I can give them, and you know, the guy on the other side of the camera, I will. I'm happy to do. So. Okay, and then now the last question for okay. Gen Con. Right. All right. I need to apologize to all the dwarf fans out there, and to Aola, who gave me this huge list of questions that she faithfully compiled and got onto the forums and private messaged me with, and then I went to Gen Con and I walked back into a meat grinder and. I have yet to have the hours that it would take for me to type out decent and respectable answers to all of those questions. However, now that I can just talk, I'm going to go to town. Um, just one sec.